Recently, I've been taking, I took like the last couple months off. Usually I compete probably once, twice a month. Um, you know, just try to keep a high pace. You know, I'm young, I want to get as many matches out of the way as I possibly can, fight as many tough guys as I can. Uh, but I took a couple months off because I needed to get my, my business in order and my finances and everything like that. So I tackled a lot of, uh, a lot of business stuff for the last couple months, started a new apparel company, um, you know, excited about that and uh, just, it, it puts my mind a little bit at ease. Most of the time I'm just focusing on being an athlete, but you know, I always have this other business stuff hold it, held over my head, you know, with my academy and everything. Uh, it's just nice to kind of like get some of that stuff done. Um, but uh, back on track now and I'll be competing heavy. I have, uh, you know, Polaris obviously coming up right after that, ADCC, and then I'm sure we'll find some more matches till the end of the year and uh, you know, I'm just, just happy to be a professional grappler. Life is good. Finally! Woo! He gets you that shit every week. Every week. I told you I'd come back for you. I make sure I build a f solid foundation in uh, boxing, Muay Thai, uh, hopefully one day I'll get a chance to meet up with somebody to train some karate as well, to get some distance management. Um, I'm really looking to be fundamentally sound when it comes to standing on the, uh, on the feet, um, so that when, I go, when it comes to trying to set up a takedown or whatever the case may be, I have some sort of foundation to work with. I'm able to defend myself. I'm not just relying on you know, a scramble to a takedown to for every victory. You know, I want, uh, I want to have control. And I've always made it a big part of what I do. I might not be the best wrestler in the world. I might not be the best uh, no-gi judo guy in the world, but I certainly work on those skills consistently to make sure that, you know, I'm at least up to par. So if I want to hit a move in a standing position, I can at least be convincing with it uh, so I can maybe set something else up. You know, uh, I think it's extremely important uh, and something that a lot of people are not doing. And when I plan to transition to MMA, that's what I plan to do. Um, so, you know, what you guys are going to see is you're going to see me boxing more, you're going to see me doing Muay Thai more, um, all these different skills. And I'm going to try to eventually fundamentally put all of them together. That's also another piece of the puzzle. Um, but, you know, I'm, just, I'm working hard. I suck. You know, but uh, we're getting better every day. So uh, I'm very excited to do my striking training. Sucks getting hit in the face, but hey, it's part of the game. So I've been training at Unity for my jiu-jitsu, and then at night time I do my cardio and like my treadmill stuff. And then I'm, I'm gonna still go to Jersey and get my wrestling in. There's a lot of good wrestlers from Jersey. There's a lot of tough motherfuckers from Jersey too, so which is good. Uh, I like to go over there and you know get like a couple of good sessions in there, and then I'm going to be training at UND a lot too with the Meow Brothers and Marilla. So I'm just you know getting in my own work right now, I'm my own coach, so can't make sure I'm prepared. Just said 190. Yeah, I mean that fight was it was what it was, you know, and I took I took it pretty hard, so. I've been thinking about that match ever since. I haven't. There hasn't been a day that's gone by that I haven't thought about that match. I had dreams about that match, and I know what it, what it's going to take to, you know, come back and avenge my loss. I mean, the only thing that's changed is that he just became more of a bitch. I mean, that's the only thing that's really changed, you know. I mean, I'm a different animal than I was then. I was still an animal back then, but now it's it. I'm going to fuck him up really bad. <laughs> I'm not bothered by it. He's a one-trick pony. I mean, you know, I mean, the whole team are one-trick ponies. So, I mean, I respect them though, because they they go out there, they fight, you know, they they talk shit and they back it up, you know. So, I can see where they're coming from. I do respect them at the end of the day. This is just business, but I'm about to kick his ass. At the end of the day, I want to be the best jiu-jitsu fighter there is, and then go on MMA. But right now, you know, the the cards I was dealt. It's kind of switching up a little bit faster than I would like it. Maybe I'm going to do MMA and then maybe I'll come back to Jiu-Jitsu, but it doesn't matter. I mean, they're all going to get it. So there's a lot of people speaking my name in MMA and Jiu-Jitsu. I'm the only real money fight in Jiu-Jitsu, so I kind of feel bad leaving. But at the end of the day, you know, I just want to beat everybody. That's what it is. I don't really care about MMA, Jiu-Jitsu, kickboxing, street fight. I just want to beat everybody's ass, you know? So that's just how it is at the end of the day. I'm just a competitive motherfucker. <laughs> And the way that you uh, the way that you get good at tearing cards is buying packs of a hundred decks of cards. Or is it have to take the jokers out there? You can't. 
Uh, so it's a pretty good half. I'm gonna see if I can. Uh, I might actually be able to quarter this. Oh yeah. Oh, it's a pretty clean quarter. Then we go really crazy. Let's see if we can go one eighth. Not a chance. <laughs> so this is the replicate, the head of the anvil. Can you see the anvil over there behind you? So that's like way too thick and it's a bit awkward because it slants off to the side. But that's the reason to like, well Daniel, why do you want to lift the anvil, anvil up by the horn apart from the fact that it looks cool? Uh, but the vertical gripping position of the anvil is the same as the vertical gripping position of a wrist. So the problem that people have when they're, they're doing any barbell stuff, whether that's like doing pull-ups to train their grip or doing rows with any handle that has two anchor points. So like a handle like this has two anchor points, right? Mm -hmm. But when you're wrestling and you're coming, you're, you're here, you only have one anchor point. So all, a lot of that, that angle that you're gripping is a horizontal gripping position. It doesn't really work. You need to be able to transfer that into a vertical gripping position when you're coming into here and controlling here and stuff like that. But the stuff that you do for gi and no gi, for grip training, are completely different. So like this stuff here is obviously no gi stuff. A lot of the forearm stuff, even the way that like I do pull-ups is different. And so I do almost all my pull-ups like this. Because from here, the difference between the forearm engagement and the wrist engagement from here to here is completely different. So like my wrists are completely straight here, so how am I working a hooking angle that you're going to use in no gear a lot? So from here, you're really using this hooking angle to engage a lot more of the forearm. So even like that, like how you do pull-ups, obviously the best thing to do is to work all of them. But how you do pull-ups is like a really big difference between like gi pull-ups and no gi pull-ups. It almost sounds ridiculous. MMA, I love MMA and grappling, but competing in grappling is like more fun, more fun to me. It's less stress. There's more stress to MMA. So me having an MMA fight and grappling fight right after is a little, uh, you know, trying to train for both, trying to balance it out. So you, the body gets a little beat up trying to do all the sparring and then trying to get enough grappling in. But it'll be, you know, an interesting too, you know, competing right after. But I think it'll be more fun because after the fight, then it's more of a relax and just go in there, go to go to England, hang out there for a few days before, and then go and compete. Yeah, my last time I got to fight AJ, that was, a, that was a fun experience. AJ's a guy that I didn't know anything about when I took the match. I'm just like, yeah, sure. Because I wasn't really following Jitsu at the time, so I agreed to the match. And everyone kept being like, oh, I hate this guy. And I was thinking, how can this guy be that hated? Maybe it's an act. But uh, after dealing with him, seeing how, seeing how he is, I realized why he's probably the most hated guy in the sport. And uh, it, was, it was a fun situation. You know, I went out there, we were going to the match, I ended up slapping him at the end of the match. And, First I did that, I'm like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. And then, and then everyone starts cheering me. So I'm like, okay, I get to slap a guy and I get to be the good guy. That's, that's when you know the other guy's a real jerk. Oh yeah, it was great. The crowd was super into it. It was pumped up. Uh, we had energy up, you know, me and AJ. Uh, it was definitely got some bad blood going in that match. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I got AJ and did the two most hated people in the sport. I had them both and uh, got to go against both of them. So, you know, Dylan is a talented guy. You know, he gave me a good match, but I went out there and won. I think he was, uh, that was a good match. But he was kind of being a baby about it, trying to make excuses when he lost fair and square.